that is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. For many, it would seem that allowing your homeworld to be destroyed would be a massive setback. In this video though, we're going to be looking at the Doomsday Origin and I'm going to be presenting something of a different perspective. We're going to be using our anger and our hatred and channeling it to make us stronger and give us focus. So stick around to see how we can turn something of a problem into a major advantage. But before we start looking at the Empire build itself, I am very excited to say a big thank you to Wargaming for sponsoring this video. Their game, World of Tanks, is a free-to-play title which lets you take direct control of ground forces on the primitive world of Sol 3. You'll be able to get your hands on the mechanical monsters the locals refer to as tanks. By following the link down below in the description and using the special promotional code TANKMANIA, you'll actually get to start the game with a tier 5 tank, the Excelsior, 250,000 credits, 7 days of premium access, and 3 rental tanks which will last you for 10 battles each. Those tanks are the Tiger 131, the Cromwell B, and the T3485M. This code and the benefits associated with it are only available for new players, so if you want to experience the thrills of ground combat on the primitive world of Sol 3 during its machine or atomic ages, click the link in the description, use the code TANKMANIA, and you can try World of Tanks. The Deep State is a Doomsday Origin Empire, but what does that really mean? Doomsday is an origin that comes with something of a warning label. It is apparently quite challenging. Now, I would actually argue that in some ways with this build it's actually relatively easy and straightforward. Yes, your homeworld will explode within the first 35 to 45 years after the game has started and that isn't great. But what we're going to do is turn downsides into massive upsides. Valuable resources from the doomed planet's mantle will boost the production on the surface. However, no guaranteed habitable worlds will spawn near our home system. And that means we are going to be forced to go out and find other ways of getting guaranteed planets. For government and ethics, I would 100% recommend you go with a machine intelligence. Everything else is pretty optional. Here I've gone for Rogue Servitor because it is very, very powerful with the Organic Sanctuary. We're going to be getting a lot of unity and a lot of extra stability from having Biopops. And Static Research Analysis for plus one research alternatives. You could also go for something like Rapid Replicators or Determined Exterminator if you want some extra output from your ships, as well as some juicy increased capacity. For the regular machine pops, I'm going for something pretty standard here. With your bio trophies, I would actually recommend you go for Lithoids. That's because the Lithoid trait is going to give us plus 50% habitability, and that becomes very important later on, as you'll see. Otherwise, bio trophies should always have traditional, and then repugnant and deviance, because these two traits are not going to bother them at all. They won't be producing amenities or have any need for governing ethics. After that, I've gone for something I felt like, volatile excretions and docile. And that now means the deep state is ready to start. And if you're enjoying this video, please seek refuge using that like button. And as you can see, they really weren't lying. At the start of the game, you would have no guaranteed habitable planets around your empire. The first thing I'd really recommend you do is a little bit of pop management on your capital. Go to population, and now we're going to be deprioritizing certain jobs. You want to reduce your artisan drone jobs because we don't need all those extra consumer goods, but we really do need some more minerals. We will later on be deprioritizing Hunter Seeker, but there's no need to do that straight away. And otherwise, make sure you deprioritize maintenance drones so that you get enough drones working all of the mining and tech drone jobs. From there, do all the usual things like moving to isolationist for a juicy 10% extra unity, clearing out the designs of your ships in order to get some alloys back right at the start. I'd also recommend queuing up one extra science ship we're going to be needing that pretty quickly. We can also set up some monthly trades. This is going to help boost our economy right at the start as we do have something of a glut of energy credits coming in. The end is nigh. This event is the first thing that's going to trigger on your homeworld. It's going to give you plus 10 devastation, but don't worry, the devastation will go away pretty quickly. And the Doomsday modifier. Doomsday does some really bad things to you. It gives you minus 30% habitability, minus 10 stability, and minus 50% immigration pull. It also does some really good things though. We get a massive plus 30% from alloys, plus 30% minerals from jobs, and plus 30% energy credits from jobs. If we check out our pops, that means they're going to be getting a whopping 50% net right out of the gate without doing anything. And once that devastation goes down, it's going to go even higher. Make sure to send your science ship out to start surveying. 
And once you have enough unity, you should then recruit another scientist who should begin surveying in another direction. You're going to really need those extra minerals and energy credits you can get from space exploration as you're basically only going to have one planet you can rely on in the early part of the game. When it comes to our capital, the only thing you're going to want to build here is research labs alternating with nexus districts once you run out of building slots because we really want to be pushing up our science on this capital world. The first tradition you should pick is definitely prosperity. This is going to give us a bonus 20% mining station output and we're going to take the first pick on the right here prefabricated buildings that will increase our build speed by 25% and give us a much needed build cost reduction of 10%. As soon as you see the hydroponics technology you definitely need to pick that one it's going to be essential. We're also going to be taking the fortify the border edict and using those extra alloys you should have saved up to upgrade our first few starports into star bases and on these star bases we should make sure to put solar panel networks and as soon as you've researched it, the hydroponics bay building, because this is going to boost our economy absolutely massively. We're going to be getting 12 energy and 10 food, which will then sell straight away for more energy for a total of almost 20 energy per star base. When we combine that income with all of the extra mining station income, both of minerals and energy credits, it's going to mean that you will not need to build anything on your home world except research labs right at the beginning, as we'll be able to completely balance our economy with our external resources. After you've taken prefabricated buildings, I'd then recommend you get Supremacy. You're going to want to complete this as quickly as possible. If you're playing in a multiplayer game where you can't fight before year 30, you might be able to take a couple of extra picks from Prosperity before moving into supremacy but we do really have quite a hard cap on the total unity we'll be producing of around 30. When you've completed supremacy you'll want to take supremacist for even more naval capacity and change over to the hit and run war doctrine. This is going to be essential to keeping your ships in the fight for as long as possible because once we start fighting we're probably not going to be producing many more new ships for quite a while. At year 10 I've now got 12 calculated drones on my capital and I am suffering from some negative amenities reducing my stability a bit but don't worry about it as long as your stability doesn't go below 50 you actually haven't really got a problem. Generally speaking it's better to have the drones working in either the calculator or the tech or mining jobs and get those extra resources than having them working in maintenance unless that's going to bring your stability below 50. Around year 10 you'll also get the conditions worsen event that will trigger that's going to slap you with some more devastation and give you even lower habitability, lower stability and lower immigration pull but it will double the bonuses you're getting from alloys, minerals and energy credits. At this time I'd recommend you move from a balanced production production policy over to a manufacturing focus. That's going to give you a whopping 20% output to your complex drones, basically your researchers and metallurgists, and a minus 20% to menial drone, but given that we just got a whopping 30% extra to those two jobs given the doomsday just increased, we can comfortably swallow this minus 20%. This also highlights why I went for the Lithoids Pops, because as a homeworld you're going to start with 80% plus 30% for your habitability. Now the initial modifier means you'll only be at 80% if you're a regular pop, but by having Lithoids that is going to massively boost the habitability of our species and mean we stay at 100% for a long long time and thus keep down their upkeep and increase their production. Once you've filled up with research labs, you should then start building industrial districts. This happened for me at around year 15 or 16, and I'm now pushing more drones into this job to boost my alloy production. In order to make sure none of your neighbors get any funny ideas and decide to attack you before you have a navy, make sure to improve relations with them and also send them some great trade deals. You should have quite a bit of extra food lying around that you can give them as well as possibly some consumer goods too and that will just help boost relations and stave off any ideas they might have about going to war. Speaking about our biotrophy pops, once we get to 10 biotrophies that'll be it, we will be at our maximum number of possible biotrophies. That's because I'm not going to recommend you build a second organic sanctuary and you almost certainly don't have another planet yet. If you do have another planet by now you should absolutely go out and colonize it and put a few pops down on that world along with an organic sanctuary. Otherwise once you get to 10 you should wait until this progress bar has almost filled up and then enable population controls on your biotrophy pops so they don't outgrow the possible living space. 
We hit Doomsday level 3 and it was absolutely ridiculous. We're now getting 90% alloys, minerals and energy credits from jobs, whilst apparently suffering minus 70% habitability and minus 20 stability. I'm managing to balance that stability loss with the massive approval rating we're getting from our bio trophies, and that's why a Rogue Servitor is really, really good for this build. But the year is only 2225, and I've already got 11,000 alloys, and I'm making 212 per month. It is completely ludicrous. I have had to start disabling dem and demolishing some of my research labs. That's because as a machine intelligence, your research drones will take energy upkeep, and you will need to, as you start using up your economy, unemploy those drones, re-employ them as fabricators, or possibly push them down into tech drones. And there's no point in keeping these research labs around. Once we've stopped using them, we're never going to use them again, because don't forget, this planet is going to go the way of the dodo. I've also gotten rid of my mining districts and converted those into industrial districts, and that's because I really don't have enough pops to work all of the jobs going. Around 2227, you want to start building lots of destroyers and spending all of those alloys you've got saved up. You will have almost certainly gone over the resource capacity, so make sure to throw down a resource silo on one of your star bases so that you don't run out of alloy storage space. At this time, as you start building ships, your power level should be going up dramatically. It's actually gotten to the point here where my local neighbor that I'm about to conquer has proposed that he becomes my vassal instead. Unfortunately for him, that isn't really going to be an option. We're going to make some claims on all of his planets and then declare a war of conquest. War were declared. If you're playing single player, I am actually on Grand Admiral AI here. It is pretty much impossible that the AI has more fleets than you at this point, so don't worry about it, even if they have lots of defensive alliances. At around this time, you also get something completely ridiculous. We're now at plus 120% extra alloys, minerals, and energy credits, which is almost insane. Don't forget to queue up a load of armies before you go to war. You'll want at least four or 500 power worth of armies so that you can quickly take all of the enemy worlds. And the AI really didn't even stand a chance here. I flew in with my 14K of destroyers. Yes, that's right, 90 destroyers. I do have a healthy amount of alloys left over here, so I really could build quite a few more if I wanted to as well. But either way, you should be able to achieve overwhelming victory in just a couple of years. Ah, victory. And with that victory, there is no longer an immediate threat to the survival of your species. But what do you think about Doomsday Origin? Is it really possible to use it in an effective way? Let me know down in the comments below. You are going to, however, have some quite urgent economic problems straight away. To deal with this, I recommend you first do a little bit of curation on the new world you've taken. So demolish any ruined buildings and build a couple of organic sanctuaries to make sure the pops on those planets are sated. You should also completely unemploy all of your calculators for now. Research isn't going to be happening for at least five years while you rebalance your economy. Don't forget to turn on the evacuation protocol edict, as that's going to give us a juicy minus 50% resettlement cost, and then start resettling your pops over to their new planets. It has taken me a few years to completely rebalance everything, but don't worry, while you are doing that rebalancing, you can begin launching and winning a second military campaign to get your hands on even more planets or possibly turn another empire into your vassal. At this point, I definitely recommend getting one vassal over more planets because you're already going to be having some economic issues as it is. Unless the other empire is a machine intelligence and you can just straight up take their worlds, the second empire you take should almost certainly be a vassal. You'll also notice that I haven't lost a single destroyer from either of my fleets. That's because I've combined the trickster admiral for an extra 25% disengagement chance with the hit and run war doctrine, giving me 58% extra combat disengagement on these destroyers, as well as their base of another 50% for being destroyers. That should mean even though you're not going to be producing many extra alloys after you start the war and after you reorganize your population, this initial fleet of 15 to 20k of ships should get you through the first 20 years of conquest until you get to a point where you've managed to restabilize your economy. And now you'll have an economy bigger than any other empire around you in the game. Yes, your capital is still going to explode, but you will get a 12 month warning before it goes off, at which point I 
I'd recommend you resettle all of the robot pops you have on the planet, but you probably want to leave the bio trophies around unless you really are desperate for extra bio trophies, but I would suspect you've got plenty already. Whatever you do in the galaxy, you will never be able to save your homeworld, and the pain of that loss should drive you to complete galactic dominance in absolutely no time. Your heat has made you powerful. Conquering the galaxy through military means is something we've shown off to great effect in this video. There are, however, other ways to conquer the galaxy, like using some sneaky diplomacy. If you'd like to know how to use diplomacy to conquer the galaxy in just 50 years, click the video on screen now.